So, in this chapter we will learn about threads. Um, threads are, are useful uh, for releasing the UI thread, for instance, but we can use thread for any operation we want. So, we have to know that in Android we have the main thread, which is the UI thread, that is the only one that can update the view. Okay, and so we have only one UI thread per uh, application. And now we can ask, can we build other threads? Yes, we can build other threads. There are some rules to respect. The first rule to respect is do not block the UI thread. So this is quite simple. And the second rule we have to respect is only the UI thread can modify the UI. So we have already seen that asynchronous task helps to do that. But if we have a long computing, we may want to use threads. So for instance, we can consider this snippet of code. So when I click some button, I instantiate a new thread, and inside of the run method, I just load an image and then, once, once the image has been loaded, I can set up image view, which is some UI component, to the new, the, the new image. Okay? And then I can, I can uh, call start method in order to run my thread. This is wrong. I cannot do that. Why I can do that? Because in the core, in, in, in the core of our thread, we modify some UI element. So we have to find a way to communicate between the UI thread and the various thread we will instantiate. So let's have a look to this example, which is quite close from the previous example. We can see that the only difference is that while in the previous slide here I was setting my image view to set image bitmap to B, what I do here is I call some method which is post that embeds a new runnable and inside of the run method I set up my image. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that views in Android have a specific ability and this ability is to be able to take a runnable and to run it inside of the UI thread. So every views in Android can have this post method, have this post method which is able to take a runnable and perform some action. So with that, we are able to communicate between the various threads and the main thread, or the UI thread, okay? So here we can see that there are three methods, on run UI, post, and post delegate, and all of these methods do the same with asynchronous part and so on. But basically, this is the three methods we can use if we want to update the view from a component that has not access to the view. So how does it work? We can, we have to understand that a thread holds a message queue, okay? And this message queue will be filled by the other threads. And this message queue represents all the action we have to perform later. This message queue is thread safe, so it means that multiple threads can access this queue in order to fill with other action to do, okay? And this queue will be treated by the looper. So the looper will just take some element, remove it from the queue, and so on. And by default, we have to know that only the UI thread have a looper and a message queue. So this is a small example to illustrate this. So we have the thread UI with a looper and a message queue. 
And what's happening? We have UI event and system event that will fill the queue. And then we have the, the looper that will perform some action according to the actions that are on the message queue. OK. So first of all, let's see how we can create on our, our own looper. So here we have a looper thread, which extends threads. We have an handler. And this is where we can do something. And then inside of the run method, we just prepare the looper. And then we can build the new handler which has some method inside which is under the message, what's happening when I have a message. And then I can call looper.loop .loop in order to be able to set up the loop. So now that I have done that, I can define the handler inside of the UI thread here. And we can see that now the handle message will display some text. So now when I will receive the message, I will, the handle message will be triggered. And then I can display something. OK? And this is it. So what we have to know is that the handler is associated to a given thread. And so here we can see that I define a notify UI uh, method. And I just ask for the handler the message. And then I send this message to the UI thread. And then my thread will only sleep, notify the UI, sleep, notify the UI, and so on. So now that we have understood how we can exchange information between threads, we can fix priorities among the various threads. First of all, we can have, for instance, thread priority audio. And then we can have thread priority background, and so on. And so according to the priority of the various threads, we can have an impact on the scheduler of my, uh, my application. So to sum up, only the UI thread can modify the UI. Uh, if we want to modify this UI, we have many options. The first one is to use background asynchronous task. The second one is to use threads. And to do that, we have to communicate between the various threads and the UI thread. And this can be done through the message queue and the looper. Every, every thread can define a looper and a message queue, but by default, only the UI thread has this mechanism implemented. And at any time, we can define an handler in order to be notified later that something happened and display something on the UI thread.